I say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says we have. And I can do what it says I can do. I'm forgetting my thing after 30 years of confessing that. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. Oh. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. What uh, Silas just did is describing the scripture that we're going to be working off of tonight. In Philemon 1.6. Some may call it Philemon. I don't care what you call it. I call it Philemon. It's, I'm from Oklahoma. Philemon 1.6. And, and, and I'm going to read this in the King James. I actually think the King James communicates it better than the other versions I have. So I'll read it in that. And then. But it says that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You know, Jesus said all things are possible if we only believe. And we have to get past our limited thinking and all the things that we may have done or not done right in the past. We've got to broaden our horizons and believe for better things than what we've had. And don't ever, ever, ever give up on the dream that God's placed in your heart. I know some of you have been believing for a long time for certain things you've been praying about. And sometimes you've been praying about it. It just seems like nothing's happening. And I hear people say, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, but nothing seems to change. God must not hear my prayers because I can't see any difference. But friends, when your faith uh, uh, seems like it's weak, that's when your faith has to come strong in what God can do because I'm as strong in the power of His might, not my own. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things uh, that we hope for, and the evidence of things we cannot see. What you've got to understand, there will always be a period of time mit, uh, between the realization of something you prayed for and the time that you prayed. But there's not, uh, but I'm going to qualify this in a minute, there's no time between the time that you prayed it and God started working on it. And just because you don't see anything with your physical na natural eyes at the time doesn't mean that God's not working in the background moving things around to do that very thing that you prayed for. Psalm 56, 9 says it like this. The very day we call for help, the tide of the battle turns. How's that? The very day we call for help, the tide of the battle turns. You know, uh, Hebrews 12, 2 says that Jesus is the developer of our faith. And I know 1 Peter chapter 1 talks about the trial of your faith. In 1 Peter 1, 6, it says, So be truly glad. Now, this is in the Living Bible. Be truly glad. There's wonderful joy ahead, even though the going is rough for a while down here. These trials are only to test your faith to see whether or not it's strong and pure. Man, I want to tell you something. When things aren't working out the way you think they ought to right now, that's when you need to use your faith. You know, some people say, I've got strong faith. Well, yeah. Because nothing's going on in your life. Your pocket's full. Your, your spouse still loves you. Your kids think you're cool. The church is not mad at you. <laughs> now you can say, boy, faith is something else. But no. What about when it seems like the finances have hit the, hit the ground? When your health doesn't seem to get in the doctor has said something, man, I want to tell you something. That's when your faith has to grow, and that's, that's when you have to start confessing the Word. Well, there are solutions to it. When your faith gets weak like that, there are some solutions. What do you think the number one solution is? The Word of God. The Word of God. Say this, Don, Word of God. Not word of Don. <laughs> no. I could say that to everybody in here. See, I say it to myself. There are some times when a problem happens 
And I said, well, I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do. Well, wait a second. Maybe I'll find out what God wants to do. Amen. So number one, it's the word of God. Number two, it's praise and thanksgiving. There's two things I got to have to make it through the rough times. You know, uh, uh, Silas and Charity, both of you are worshipers. And uh, I love the fact that you love the Word of God. <laughs> hey, may, you know what? I didn't even move. <laughs> you have any idea what that is? <laughs> no. It's, it's interference from outside radio or something, I think. So the only Christian thing to do is find out who's got a walkie-talkie out there and kill them. <laughs> well, let's make sure they're saved first. <laughs> so you got the Word of God that you can stand on. And I'm going to tell you something. That, that's what you stand on. You don't stand on anything else. Uh, people get sorry when they tell me. They get sometimes even angry at me. Well, here's what I think. I said, I don't give a flip what you think. To this very day, I don't give a flip what people think. But I really care what God says. Because you and I can come up with all kinds of solutions for problems, and most of them stink. But God has the perfect solution for your problem. Amen? So if one, number one, the Word of God. We need to be in the Word of God enough to know what some answers are. Number two is praise and thanksgiving. I, don't, I didn't say wait till everything's working out. Go, oh, my God, thank you. You know, uh, if somebody, if, if Publishers Clearinghouse shows up, you have prayed that God would meet your needs and Publisher Clearinghouse out, they're going to give you $1,000 a day for the rest of your life. If you can't praise until you, that happens, you don't have faith at all. You need to praise God that he meets all your needs according to his riches and glory because the word says so, and that's the type of God that we have. Amen. The dark hour. In your life, that's the time to shout forth the praises of God. Amen. You can't stay down and depressed and defeated as long as you got the praises of God coming out of your mouth. I mean, it's impossible. You can't, when people say, well, I've just been so depressed, well, then I could tell them, then you're not praising God. You won't be praising God and in depression, I guarantee you. Praise isn't anything but faith at work. Because remember what it said, the communication of your faith. One of the ways that we communicate our faith is through our praise and worship. When you praise God in your dark hour, it literally drives the demons crazy. The devil knows if you can praise and uplift the name of Jesus, no matter what comes against you, he knows there's not anything you're, you're not going to be able to accomplish with your life. I've said this a million times, but I'm going to say it again. I'm sick of reading where sometimes people in this church are complaining about their life. Worst testimony in the world on Facebook. It's a wonder people don't write in, well, I'm glad I don't go to your church because they don't have any faith. Because the truth about it is, is that if you want to talk to a friend, don't make it a Facebook friend. Call them up on the telephone and say, hey, let's pray. Amen. See, the Apostle Paul went through all kinds of dark times. We think we got problems. But listen to what Paul went through. He said, five times I was given 39 lashes with a leaded whip for preaching the gospel. He said, three times I was beaten with rods. I was even stoned for preaching the gospel. He said, I was shipwrecked three times, and once I even spent a night and day on the open sea. He went on to say, I've been tired, lonely, cold. I've been hungry. I've been thirsty. I've been in all kinds of incredible danger throughout my whole lifetime. But I love what he said after that. He said, for our light afflictions are but for a moment. Light afflictions? You imagine the Apostle Paul had the audacity to call all that he'd been through light afflictions. Don't you know Satan's jaw went like this? His jaw had to drop the minute he heard Paul talk about all the things that the devil had sent him. God didn't send those things. But all those things that the devil sent to drive them down, and yet he kept praising God. He called it light afflictions. You mean, in other words, Paul went right up into Satan's face and said, listen here, Satan, 
You've done your best to try to kill me and try to discourage me from doing God's will throughout my whole lifetime. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write down in God's eternal word that these are only light afflictions. <laughs> Amen. Can you imagine? I'm going to write it down so that they're only light afflictions so that people now and forever are going to know. Even a thousand years from now, they're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Absolutely nothing that the devil can do or anybody else to those that love Jesus and drive them away. No way. See, that's the attitude we've got to have in the dark hours. Even if all hell breaks loose, there's nothing that's going to stop us from continually uplifting and magnifying the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. But see, what happens too often is we give up too easily. I know at least three people that go to this church. I, I, I'm not saying their names, but I've ha seen three people in the last couple months use these words on Facebook. I'm done. Well, the only way you're done as a Christian is if, G if God crawled off the throne and the devil got up there. And that ain't going to happen. I'm convinced that the answer is just right around the corner. Even in yours and my life, if we've been praying about things. It's just, it's just about to appear. But we get a little weak in our faith and we start listening to the lies of the enemy. And then we're no longer speaking the word of faith. But now we're speaking. Remember, we talked about words two Sundays ago. And, and there are some voices out here. There's the voice of Satan saying one thing. There's a voice of God saying another. But the voice that makes a difference is your voice. Are you going to come into agreement with the devil? Are you going to come in agreement with what God says? The moment the devil sees the smallest sign of weakening in your faith, he's going to turn up the intensity. Haven't you ever heard Christians go like this? I thought things were going bad last week, but now. Now they really went downhill. Well, yeah, because all you do is give them. See, the, the devil can't read your mind. So he operates off what you say. So when you say things like, I'll tell you what, my finances are in the pit, and then the devil goes, well, I'll show you the pit. And then because we're ignorant, if we're not careful, we'll turn around and say, you know, God is trying to teach me something. God don't put your finances in the pit. You know, it's funny, but over the years, I had somebody come up to me and say, I don't know what happens to my money. And I looked, and they bought. Now, I know this don't sound like much. They didn't have any kind of budget, uh, any money at all. But they went down every day and bought uh, a big gulp from 7-Eleven when they used to sell big gulps. I don't know what they do now. And I said, you know, you ought to multiply big gulps over a year's time. You could have paid a bill with that. You know what I'm saying? So it isn't just that you, God hasn't provided it's that many times we don't take what God provides and use it for, God, for what God provided it for. About the time that, 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 that you're having a hard time, he'll cause you to read every article that talks about how, how bad the economy is. The devil will make sure you turn on the TV just at the time when bad news is coming on. He can even cause people to come across your path that you know and love somehow, some way, speak a discouraging word over you. That's why if I'm going through a tough time, I don't want somebody to come along and go, oh, poor Bob. I know what you mean. Life is so tough. I myself have been through I just... Don't talk to me that way. Speak a word of faith to me. If you see the pastor down, speak a word of faith. And people come along and they say, and you start receiving words that you know because you have the witness of the Spirit that these are not words coming from the throne of God. And they'll speak, it'll be like the wind's been taken out of your sail. You'd be like straw that breaks the camel's back. And we finally just say, when we've heard all that negative say, we finally say, forget it. I knew it wasn't going to happen for me. My dreams never work out. 
and nobody knows the trouble I've seen. You know, come on. You just go get up on hee haw, say gloom, despair, and agony on me. Yeah, I hear it out of Christian's mouth. Nothing ever good happens to me. I'll read that scripture again, uh, Philemon 1, 6, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. In the Amplified, it says, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective and powerful because of your accurate knowledge of every good thing which is ours in Christ Jesus. When we communicate, Paul instructs us to what to say. He says, communicate your faith. That the communication of thy faith, acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. Amen? Speak good things about yourself. Speak good things about God. Talk about what God has done in you. Every good thing. It's not an accident. You know, today I ran onto somebody I haven't seen, I know, in probably 10 years. And uh, when I saw him, he said, how's everything going? He said, uh, never mind, I already know. I said, what do you mean? You're too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> yeah, that's still true. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I said, if I'm gonna, I thought afterwards, if I'm going to have a reputation, I'm going to have a reputation to God speaking a positive word. Amen? That the communication of thy faith may become effectual. That word may become effectual. The effectual is the word Energeo. And it carries the idea that something has been energized, that the communication of thy faith may become energized. In other words, put the key in the ignition. Your car can be full of gas and enough to go a long distance, but if you, you won't go anywhere until that key's in the ignition and turn. Once the engine started, the potential for that car is ready to be unleashed. The capability of moving and actually moving are two different things. The capability of moving and actual moving are two different things. Someone has to turn the key in the ignition. Every good thing is in you in Christ Jesus. Let me, let me say that a different way. Everything you need, everything you desired, every wonderful dream you've ever had, all the health that you need to walk in, all the prosperity, everything because every good and wonderful gift comes down the, from the Father of lights. Amen? Every good thing is already in you. He saved you. He healed you. He redeemed you. He's given you a sound mind. He's imparted gifts to you and talents to you. He's planned a wonderful, glorious life for you. You might say, I don't feel happy, healthy, prosperous, and smart. I feel like a dope and a failure. But you're like a car loaded and ready to go. Because every good thing that Jesus is, is in you. And you possess the key to unleash all the potential that God has placed in you. You have the key to that. But how do you turn that ignition on? So the great work that God has done in you is activated and released. By acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ, you by acknowledging every good thing. When somebody tries to point their finger and say, man, they act like you're no good. And you say, no, no, you don't understand. You ever wanted to look at Jesus? You're looking at him. I'm getting tired of people saying, well, you know I'm not Jesus. Well, then who are you? Because you're in Christ and he's in you. And every good thing. Uh, I had this revelation many years ago, so I know people have been here a long time have heard me say this. But did you know that all that God is dwells in you? Not just a little bit. You don't have a little bit here and somebody's got a little bit there. Everything. The person of God lives in you. So everything that God is, all of his power, all of his grace, all his healing, all his prosperity, every good and wonderful thing that God is already dwells in you. But you need to put the ignition, the key in the ignition, and release all that potential and do great things with your life. Amen? Amen. Acknowledging every good thing. Turn to your neighbor and say, a lot of good things in me.
So it says, by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. That word acknowledging is the word epignosis. Epignosis. Well instructed, intensive, deep knowledge of the facts is what epignosis means. Well instructed, intensive, deep knowledge of the facts. Pictures a person who knows his facts like a professional. Sure of his information. And confesses the truth. You ever talk to somebody or listen to somebody who says, my gosh, they know a lot. I love hanging around those kind of people. They just I go, my gosh, look how much they know. And I like hanging around those kind of people. Why? Because they can communicate. They're well instructed. They're intensive. And they keep knowledge of the facts. And how do you get this knowledge? Before you can confess the truth, you got to know the truth. You need to know exactly who you are in Christ. And can I tell you, the average Christian doesn't know who they are in Christ. If they knew who they were in Christ, they wouldn't c confess all the negative that's in their life all the time. Let me say something else. Because I counsel a lot of people, you might think that, that I let it get to me, but I don't let it get to me, and, uh, uh, all the negative stuff that people say. Because if somebody's there just to use me as a, as a whipping post, I won't hang around them. I don't care. I don't give a flip about listening to your problems unless you give a flip about getting better. If you're just looking for somebody just to scratch on, I'm the wrong man to do that with. It won't work for me. It won't help you either. You know. And I think that's an important thing. How many people do you have in, li in your life that speak negative things to you all the time, that are constantly complaining about their life and nothing ever seems to go right? They always have a new crisis going on. They're subtracting from you. They're dividing you. But the reality of it is you need to hang around some people that will add to you and multiply you. Because that's how you'll get better and better. Do you know what we call that? Somebody told me, said, well, that sounds just mean. It's not mean. It's called people of like faith. We're to hang around people of like faith because he said bad company corrupts good morals. You will tend to become like the people you hang around with. If you hang around with people that are negative all the time, you, you, I, I remember when I worked at construction, I was already in, in the ministry when I first started. In fact, the, the pipeline job helped support this church when we first started. But when I was still working as a pipeline foreman, I remember I'd come home and boy, I'd get frustrated with something and a word would come out that I never say. And I knew what it was. I was hanging around guys in construction who every other word was a cuss word. And I would think that it wouldn't bother me, but it, it, it gets on you. And so you've got to watch all the more. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of negativity out there. And, but the Bible doesn't say that you're going to get better by communicating the negativity. It, it tells you by the communication of your faith. So you need to say the things that the Word of God says. Amen? You need to know exactly who you are in Christ. You, don't, you need to know what Jesus purchased in your redemption. You need to know every good thing that God has placed in you by Christ Jesus. Knowledge of all these truths is so concrete that you're absolutely unmovable and unwavering. Right now, I know some people that this tonight should be hearing this sermon. But they're not here. They're, uh, uh, their attitudes ain't been good lately, and so they're not here. So they're not here the very sermon they need to hear. Do, do you know that? Isn't that the way the devil works? I mean, go to church, study, read, listen to tapes, watch the, the teaching videos more than once on the Internet. you got to know the truth. That's the key to releasing that potential. But how do you turn that key? How do you turn that key? If all that potential is in us, if we get to the place where we really start knowing what the truth is, how do you turn that key? You speak the truth. Because it's the, the communication of your faith that makes it effective. You've got to say it. Speak it. Confess it. The truth in your life does no good until it's spoken. The moment you open your mouth, 
start confessing the good things in you by Christ Jesus. A supernatural connection is made between you and your faith. All the good things Jesus has deposited in you will be released. Get all that potential God's placed in you released by taking the truth from the Word of God and confessing it with your mouth. You know how I know some people don't get this? You know how I know? Because if I can get done with a sermon and ask them to tell me one thing I said, there are many times people can't tell me a thing I said. Did you know that? You know why? They're, they're listening, but they're not really listening. The best thing a person could ever do, and some of you have them down, the best thing you could ever do is take notes. Take notes because you, you'll be writing it and you'll be listening to it and it'll get in you. Kathy will tell you, when I go to a conference, when I go to a conference, I have pages and pages and pages of notes. I want to learn more about God. When the Bible says to greatly rejoice, that means you've got to stand up tall Put your shoulders back with a smile on your face. Raise your hands toward the heavens. you got to say, Father, I thank you. I, I think you're just going to make this confession with me. Say, Father, Father I, thank I thank you that you are the great God that created this whole universe by your mighty word of power. And there's no other God like you. Father, I thank you. And I can say like the saints of old, you are my God, and in you I put my trust. You're my Savior, my Deliverer, my Redeemer, my Healer, my Helper. Father, I greatly rejoice because your word says no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Father, I thank you that every tongue raised against me in judgment you will condemn. Father, I thank you that your word says you always cause me to triumph. When my enemies come against me, like a flood, your spirit will raise up a barrier against them, Father. And Father, I thank you that you are my light and my salvation. I don't have to be afraid of anybody or anything. Father, I rejoice because your word says you laugh at my enemies. Father, I choose to join with you in that laughter. I'll join in the fun. I say, ha ha, devil. My answer's on the way. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Man, you can't, you can't praise God like that and stay feeling defeated. You want to get out of depression, overcome the dumps? You got to start talking about the solution, not the problem. You need to start praising God right where you are. Words are powerful and they are creative. They can pick you up. They can tear you down. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Listen, when everything around you looks dark and hopeless and you don't know how you're going to make it, uh, you've got to change that atmosphere of defeat by boldly declaring, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. When your circumstances, when they look impossible, you can feel the enemy coming on you. You need to say, if God's for me, who dare be against me? Let me tell you something. Me and God make a majority. Amen. There used to be a song, you and me against the world. Well, you know, that's the way it is with me and God. Me, me and God against the world. The Bible says, you quoted it earlier, Bob did, the, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The happier you get, the stronger you become, and the more worried the enemy is going to get. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap offering with you.
We need to concentrate on talking about the solution. If all you do is talk about how bad society is, how bad the economy is, how bad things are happening in the world, how bad things are inside of your life, don't be disappointed. But I guarantee you, if that's your confession, things will never change for you. Hallelujah. King David said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. What I love about that is he said, Oh, magnify the Lord. Did you ever get a play with a magnifying glass? You know, I don't know why it is that my, my grandfather, probably because his eyes weren't good, but there was always magnifying glasses around that house. Listen, he's got one right there. <laughs> Granddad Bob has one right there, see? But a magnifying glass. And I didn't know that they could be used for, for more productive things than burning the antennas off little ants. And, but, you know, I, <laughs> so, <laughs> so what's King David actually saying? He's saying, don't magnify your problems. Don't magnify the, the negative circumstances in your life. Don't magnify your difficulties. Don't magnify all those adversities you're going through. He said, if you're going to magnify anything, make sure you only magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Sometimes, especially if those weren't people of faith, it can greatly hinder your version, vision and cause you to accept living a life that's far, far from what God wants you to live. When you hang around and listen to the world and listen to the voice of the devil, it can so negatively, you have to, you have to draw a line in the sand and say, no more. No more. Did you know I talked to a guy uh, earlier this week who was talking about what he went through as a child and the abuse, and I said, listen, I'm going to tell you, I remember the day, I don't remember the date, but I remember the day when I told the Lord, I'm not allowing my past to steal one more second of my present or future. I remember that day. Because when I made that decision, because making that decision was consistent with God's Word, it was like a burden was lifted off of me absolutely unreal and I have felt free ever since then because I am not a product of what happened yesterday I'm a product of what I'm speaking today it's going to affect my future so I'm going to communicate my faith by acknowledging all the good things that's in me through Christ Jesus amen, amen. are you excited about that tonight amen. man I'm telling you Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he'll be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Jeremiah there in Jeremiah 17, 5 and through 8, Jeremiah is contrasting two things, two opinions. Some people are cursed because they trust in man and what this world can provide. And some people are blessed because they've made that choice to trust in the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Guess what? I'm done real early, ain't I? I'm getting done awfully early on Thursday nights. <laughs> blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Hallelujah. You receive that from Pastor tonight? Yeah. So you know what that means. I expect you to be communicating your faith by, by acknowledging all the good that's in you and that God has done for you. That's how we're going to communi communicate our faith. Not by complaining about some little temporary situation that you're in right now. And I know people tease me about this sometimes, but, but I have done this for so long now that when people say, well... I got nothing going right in my life. Yeah, I'll say your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <laughs> your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
If the devil came along and snuffed you right now, you'd go immediately into the presence of the Almighty God. you got plenty to be thankful for. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. I'm glad you can get hugs from that little girl. She won't give me a hug on Sunday morning. I'm going to have to warm up to her. She'll have to warm up to me. You know, uh, Ruth Gray's kids, how long would they not have anything to do with me? Forever. Now they give me hugs and everything else. I thought, man, I thought you were going to become an adult before you give me a hug. But at any rate, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for everyone that's here. When I speak with this mouth, a blessing, it has to come true. I thank you for that. So I thank you that folks right here, they have much to be thankful for. They can communicate their faith because there's a lot of good things in them. All that you are, Lord, is inside of everybody that's here. I thank you and I praise you for that. And I speak it with my mouth that they are blessed coming and going the city and the country. Their head, not the tail. They're above only, not me. They lend to many, borrow from none. I thank you, Lord God. They're blessed in every area of their life. In Jesus' name, amen.